When you eat something, your body breaks it down into simpler molecules that can be utilized as fuel to keep your body functioning. The pancreas, an organ in the abdomen, produces insulin, a hormone which helps in the absorption of glucose from the bloodstream after a meal. Dietary fat is broken down into fatty acids, which the body uses for energy as well as other biological functions like testosterone production. Excess fatty acids are converted back to triglycerides, the majority of which are stored in adipose tissue, also known as fat tissue or body fat. Meanwhile, excess carbs from the meal are converted into glycogen, which is a chain of glucose molecules that can be stored and used later. The majority of glycogen is stored in the liver and muscles. However, the amount of glycogen a person can store is biologically limited. Once that threshold is achieved, the remaining energy is turned into triglycerides and stored as adipose tissue. This is the typical procedure that our bodies go through when we eat throughout a typical day. But what would happen if you didn't eat anything for three days? Well, after six to ten hours of fasting, your body enters the postabsorptive phase. During this phase, insulin levels begin to fall, and the breakdown of liver glycogen releases glucose for energy. Glycogen reserves last about 24 hours. When you don't get any fresh nutrients, your body has to start using its own glycogen reserves to fuel itself. The pancreas secretes glucagon at this stage. Glucagon is a hormone that alerts your body when it's time to release glycogen and fatty acids. If your last meal was low in carbohydrates, your body might start producing ketones as an energy source early in the fasting process. Ketones are byproducts produced by the liver when fat cells are converted into fatty acids. Generally, blood glucose levels rise during the first six hours of fasting before gradually dropping. Simultaneously, Ketone levels follow the opposite path, gradually increasing, especially after the 10th hour of fasting. Now, if you're accustomed to eating three square meals a day or you regularly eat a high-carb diet, you'll probably experience hunger and low energy levels before you hit the 10th hour mark of fasting. This hunger is heavily impacted by your circadian rhythm, because your body has developed a pattern and anticipates food intake at certain times of the day when you normally eat. According to research, if you stop eating, a hormone known as ghrelin which is responsible for stimulating appetite rises around your normal meal times, such as morning, lunch, and dinner, increasing feelings of hunger. But as you continue fasting, your hunger will begin to subside after about two hours, and your body will naturally adapt to a new meal frequency over time. After at least 10 hours of fasting, your body starts to increase the levels of a hormone known as human growth hormone, HGH, which is produced by the pituitary gland. HGH is in charge of stimulating growth, cell reproduction, and regeneration. HGH plays a key role in the fasting process since it is linked to improved muscle regeneration, athletic performance, greater immunity, and faster injury recovery. HGH is also thought to be responsible for delaying muscle breakdown. It accomplishes this by promoting metabolic processes including protein synthesis and muscular tissue repair. According to studies, the longer you fast, the more HGH your body produces. Studies have shown that fasting leads to a major increase in HGH levels, with one recent study in 47 people finding that HGH levels increased fivefold during a 24-hour fast. Another study found that fasting for two days increased HGH production by five times. After 12 to 16 hours of fasting, your body will continue to deplete its glycogen stores and increase its reliance on ketone bodies. This metabolic shift may cause a decrease in body temperature, leading to a sensation of feeling cold. The early hours of fasting have been well documented in research observing people fasting during Ramadan, a Muslim festival in which people fast from dawn to sunset every day for one month. Fasting has been proven in multiple studies to provide a variety of health benefits, including weight loss, blood sugar regulation, and protection against medical illnesses such as cancer and neurological disorders. Moreover, Fasting has been found in studies to help lower inflammation in the body, which is linked to a variety of disorders such as homocysteine, C-reactive protein or CRP, and total cholesterol to HDL ratio. Managing inflammation is a common goal for many people, and fasting has shown promise in contributing to this goal. After about 18 hours has passed, the body becomes more reliant on fatty acids, and ketone generation increases due to low blood sugar levels and rapidly depleting glycogen reserves in the liver and muscles. During this time, inflammation reduces exponentially, and HGH and a protein known as brain-derived neurotropic factor, or BDNF, increase significantly. 
HGH and BDNF stimulate the formation of new neurons and synapses in the brain, allowing nerves, sensory organs, and the brain to connect more effectively. BDNF also promotes the survival of existing brain neurons, which improves learning and memory ability. And mostly during this time, your body usually goes through a process known as autophagy. This is an auto-recycling process in which your body begins to recycle any waste it detects, which can range from broken proteins to germs to defective cells. Your body will effectively use all of the junk clogging up your system as energy. So, in simple terms, this is a cleansing mechanism for your body. There are a few other elements that have been linked to an increase in autophagy. Caloric restriction, hunger, and elevated levels of HGH and BDNF are a few of these. Fasting combines all three of these circumstances, making it an extremely effective approach for starting the autophagy process. After 24 to 32 hours of fasting, your body is most likely depleted of glycogen and has to depend exclusively on its own fat stores for energy. This causes a large increase in the concentration of free fatty acids in your system at this time. However, your brain still requires glucose to function, and to accomplish this, your body begins exploring creative ways of converting triglycerides from your fat stores into glycerol and free fatty acids. While free fatty acids can be used directly for energy, glycerol can be transported to the liver and transformed into glucose via a process known as gluconeogenesis. This can momentarily provide the brain with the glucose it requires without breaking down muscular tissue. Despite common belief, your body will significantly lower its protein breakdown rate after only 24 hours of fasting in order to preserve muscle. But make no mistake, fasting for extended periods of time can lead to muscle loss, especially if you're already slim. If you don't have much fat, your body is more likely to turn protein into glucose through the gluconeogenesis process. However, you shouldn't be concerned about muscle loss until after the first three days of fasting. This is because your body will be able to obtain the majority of the energy and glucose it requires from body fat. The increased production of human growth hormone as an anti-starvation response will also aid in this process. Within the first 24 to 32 hours, your weight scale may display a fall in weight, which is primarily due to water loss caused by carbohydrates depletion, as well as some fat loss. However, it is important to note that this fat reduction is not permanent. If you eat too much food at your next meal, you may quickly recover all of the weight you lost. Continuing to fast for 48 hours has been found to offer extra benefits for your mood, mental clarity, and focus. Fasting for 2 to 7 days has been shown to help alleviate depression, with patients reporting improvements in mood, alertness, and tranquility. However, if you're not used to fasting, it's critical to understand that it won't be all rainbows and sunshine. You may suffer some negative side effects, including as headaches, fatigue, aches and pains throughout your body, and stomach troubles. All of these things are likely to improve as you get used to fasting. After 72 hours of fasting, the body is more prone to start breaking down muscular tissue, and may also lead to vitamin and mineral deficits as well as digestive problems. Fasting for three days, on the other hand, has been demonstrated in studies to be more helpful than fasting for a longer amount of time. A study of a 41-year-old man fasting for 40 days found that ketones are created in higher quantities during the first few days of fasting and are more or less neutralized after the fifth day. Researchers also discovered a maximum weight loss of 0.9 kilograms per day during the first few days of fasting. After the first few days of fasting, the rate of weight loss slows. This shows that the most notable effects of ketosis are experienced during the first few days of fasting. During this time, the majority of the weight reduction occurs from stored fat rather than muscle mass. Until the third day, the body attempts to avoid protein catabolism and muscle breakdown by utilizing ketones as the primary energy source. However, after three days, studies show that the body may have to resort to breaking down muscle tissue to feed itself. In general, a normal fasting length typically ranges between 16 hours to 3 days, mainly depending on your previous fasting experience. Consider it the perfect sweet spot that ensures you obtain the benefits of fasting and that they exceed the negatives. In just 3 days, your body may cleanse itself while reducing some body fat, enhancing your body composition and general health. Fasting for extended durations has piqued the curiosity of scientists working on illness reversal, cancer risk reduction, and human brain diseases for these reasons. The majority of research have been conducted on animals, and it needs to be seen whether all of the benefits will apply to humans. We can declare with certainty 
based on scientific evidence, that fasting helps maintain a healthy brain and can drastically reduce inflammation markers throughout the body associated with many diseases, in addition to weight management and body composition improvement. So, that about sums it up. Hopefully, this video has taught you something new about fasting. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more videos like this.